Hello and welcome to News Tonight. I am Rodan Gonzi. We'll dig into it. President Yori Museveni has today met the and held discussions with the President of Sao, T Sao Tome and Principe, His Excellency Carlos Manuel Villanova. During a meeting held at State House in Tebe, the two leaders discussed issues concerning bilateral relations between the two countries with key focus on economic uh, cooperation. President Museveni assured his guests that Uganda is ready to cooperate with Sao Tome and Principe in various sectors of the economy. The president further told his guests that the national resistance movement ideology of prosperity is the reason for the country's progressive development since the 1980s, thus encouraging him to also implement such ideology. The president also noted that for a country to be prosperous, it must have the elements of patriotism, pan-Africanism, social economic transformation and democracy. On his part, His Excellency Manuel affirmed that his country is honored to partner with Uganda in order to enhance the economies of both states. President Manuel uh, further expressed gratitude to his counterpart for his efforts aimed at promoting economic development and bringing peace to the region. Uh, His Excellence, who is on now on a two-day working visit to Uganda, will tomorrow visit Chira Motors Corporation in Jinja. Also today, President Museveni has confirmed his attendance at this year's C10 summit, which will be held in the Republic of Equatorial Guinea. The summit will take place on the 23rd of November. The president met the confirmation after receiving official invitation from his uh, Equatorial Guinea counterpart, his Excellency Teodoro Obiang Nguema Mbasogo. The invitation letter was delivered by Equatorial Guinea's Minister for Foreign Affairs, International Cooperation and Diaspora, Mr. Simeono Yono Esono, at State House in Tebe. President Museveni is among the heads of states of African Union Committee of the 10 on the reforms of the United Nations Security Council. Mr. Esono said that it will be an honor to have the president at the summit because he is not only a member of the C10 but also a very relevant leader whom many will benefit to hear from. The committee of the 10 countries comprises of Algeria, Libya, Democratic Republic of Congo, Equatorial Guinea, Kenya, Uganda, Senegal, Sierra Leone, Namibia and Zambia.
Now, the Prime Minister Robina Nabanja has met district leaders from Kakumiro District in Kampala and encouraged them to make proper use of Emioga funds. The Prime Minister assured the leaders that the plan for construction of seed schools in the six sub counties is in the pipeline. She also assured them of the ongoing engagements with Uganda National Roads Authority to maintain the existing road network in Kakumiro and that the funds for the reconstruction and maintenance works has already been dispersed but the torrential rains have made it difficult for the works to commence. Now, Ministry of Education and Sports is set to acquire a new home in Chambogo at a contract sum of 61.9 billion shillings under the Business Technical Vocational Education Training Support Project funded by the Islamic Development Bank and the government of Uganda. During the groundbreaking ceremony, the Minister for Education and Sports, Janet Museveni, expressed hope that the new headquarters would improve coordination among departments and enhance efficiency. Ministry of Education and Sports have been located at various places such as Embassy House in Kampala and Legacy Towers. This has incurred significant rent expenditure and compromised efficiency. The ministry has now acquired land in Chambogo for the construction of its new headquarters. With our own home here at Chambogo now, we hope to be able to have a common place of convergence as a family, and this will ease coordination among departments as well as improve our efficiency, I believe. Chambogo is becoming an educational hub as several departments under the ministry, including UNEB, UBTEB, UNMEB, and the National Council for Education are situated in this area. The Minister for Education and Sports, while unveiling the groundbreaking plaque at the site, urged staff to work together to achieve their goals. A home is more than just a building. A home is made up of loving relationships. Therefore, as we embark on the construction of our home, I urge each one of us to endeavor to create the unity that we need to accomplish the work that God has given us in this season. Work is accomplished through a united team because we each have different strengths and abilities. The State Minister for Higher Education, John Chrysostom Moyingo, mentioned that the initial discussions of the BitVet support project began in March 2015, and the journey has been a test of patience. The initial terms and the condition of financing included a high component of non-concessional financing, which the Minister of Finance considered to be beyond our reach. In May 2016, more favorable financing terms and the conditions were agreed upon, including a reduced loan total and project scope, which excluded the Ministry of Education and the Sports Headquarters, which we are celebrating today. The Permanent Secretary of the Ministry of Education and Sports, Katie Lamaro, confirmed that the required approvals to commence construction have been secured and the contract was signed on October 6, 2023. The building design consists of two interconnected office towers, one with eight levels and the other with ten levels. These towers will accommodate a reception area, staff offices, meeting rooms, a cafeteria, and various facilities, management rooms. In addition, the project includes a separate 600-seater auditorium. I'm aware that the Islamic Development Bank will pay up to 68% of the contract sum, while government will foot the remaining 32%. The representative of the Islamic Development Bank stated that their priorities include promoting human resource development and education as well as infrastructure development. The Human development, 
with a focus on equipping people to drive their own economic and social progress at scale and putting the infrastructure in place to enable them to fulfill their potential is central to the vision and mission of the Islamic Development Bank. Improving quality of education is also among the priorities of the bank's strategic plan. The construction will be undertaken by Sadim Al Kuwait General Trading and Contracting Company and Dot Services Limited, who won the bid at a cost of 61.9 billion shillings. I'm Navka Farida and Sana Anit. Now, the Uganda Civil Aviation Authority has unveiled plans to relocate residents living near Entebbe International Airport to facilitate the airport's expansion and upgrade essential for meeting international standards. This announcement was made by the Director General of the Authority during an inspection by the Parliamentary Committee on Physical Infrastructure where they commended uh, the authority's ongoing work. The Parliament of Uganda has expressed its full commitment and support for Uganda Civil Aviation Authority's plans to acquire more land required for the airport's expansion as it now uh, prepares to welcome new airlines. The Construction uh, Committee conducted an inspection of the ongoing expansion and construction projects at Entebbe International Airport to assess their progress. The committee, led by Tony Awani, the vice chairperson, was guided by UCAA Director General Fred Bamwesije and toured some of the completed facilities, including the extended cargo terminal and the terminal buildings for arrivals and departures. Uh, people who, who are waiting to receive uh, their passengers will be, have a good conducive area where they can stay and give us some money. According to the Uganda Civil Aviation Authority, significant achievements have been made in the upgrade and expansion works and they are optimistic that most of the facilities are ready for operationalization. In terms of infrastructure, there are a number of uh, um, uh, positive uh, progress that we have made here. So my view, now what we need to do is to expand this airport. However, UCAA also highlighted several challenges that have impeded the smooth progress of the expansion works, including the impact of the COVID-19 pandemic. The issue of land acquisition was a major point of discussion, with committee members expressing disappointment in individuals encroaching on land designated for the airport. There are people who have encroached onto the land that originally belonged to the, to the airport, Entebbe International Airport. The idea we have is to see how we can best reclaim that land. I would request that we look ahead and see how you can utilize these 500 meters across the lake and which we use that cheap land that is the way. Because you may find that the kind of money we are going to use to compensate, relocate people. UCAA has already engaged with community members regarding the relocation issue and an agreement was reached to compensate them and provide a safer area. We've been now trying to talk to them but we are going to move in to measure the land to identify who owns what, uh, the type of land ownership, and also bring in the chief government value to do values for the land as a basis for compensation. In the meantime, they resolved that the parliament will address the matter of land acquisition and formulate a proper plans for relocating people around the airport. We want to sit down as a committee of parliament to see how we can resolve this issue. Because there is no way you are going to transfer this very, very prized facility to any other area. Honorable members, the committee members expressed satisfaction with UCAA's efforts in the upgrade and expansion of the Uganda Civil Aviation Authority and anticipate that some facilities will be commissioned by the end of December. Shaida in Nasaku, Sulaka Gugube, UBC News. Dairy experts have warned people against consuming raw milk. These have advised them to adopt to taking processed milk for the good of their bodies. They argue that processed milk is tested, purified and branded to meet all consumption standards unlike the raw milk. 
Traditionally, people used it to consume milk in raw form, but this narrative is slowly changing following the introduction of modern technology. While a section of consumers still drink milk in raw form, more especially herds men, they are experts warn of negative consequences that may arise. The milk is now being adulterated by unscrupulous traders. The traders have tendencies of separating milk and selling substandard milk to unsuspecting consumers. You do not want to speculate with your money, which is hard earned, to buy milk which is substandard for your children. Ikiriza Steven, a dairy expert working with a Dutch-based organization SNV, says it is high time milk consumers turn to drinking processed milk since it is tested at inception, treated and packed to all aiming at meeting all the required consumption standards. So it's better you use the product which you are aware about that even when you are offended, you can sue. How do you sue somebody who has given you milk which is not processed. It has no label. It is a mobile target. Your children are having food poisoning. You cannot relate it to what they have consumed. We do encourage farmers to keep on standardizing the way the, the cow is feeding. If it could be very much possible, the cow to have the same trend of feeding as it was having during the wet season. They noted that the milk sold off the roadside by hawkers is sometimes adulterated, which makes it undesirable for human consumption. Sidney Mark, the manager quite assurance at Lakeside Dairies, says any milk received at their factory is tested and any milk that does not meet their standards is dropped. Because the, the density is normally low and also the fat content is low in the milk. That is one disadvantage with quality. Then the other problem that we actually we obtain is the price fluctuation. Statistics indicate that the milk per capita stands at 64 liters per individual compared to 200 liters as recommended by the World Health Organization. This as the country gears up to promote safe milk consumption at all public forums. We do tend to keep the sweetness and the flavor of the yogurt at its right position. One, we keep the quality of milk, though the quality of yogurt that we produce, it should remain consistent or consistent throughout the whole season. Children can have yogurt. Yogurt, you can eat it. It's good diet. For people who are feeling, you know, out of mood, you know, diet is a problem. I cannot drink uh, fresh milk, but I can have it in yogurt. Western region only produces 46% of Uganda's total milk volumes, which stands at 3.4 billion litres annually. The Permanent Secretary of the Ministry of Education and Sports, Katie Lamaro, has called upon the general public to fully understand the ongoing institutional reforms and mergers, especially for the Uganda Business and Technical Examinations Board, UPTEP, and the Directorate of Industrial Training, DIT. Lamaro, while officiating at the UPTEP feedback meeting of the conduct of the July-August 2023 Business and Technical Examinations, clarified the role of the two institutions. UPTEP Executive or, or Secretary Onesmas Oyesij says the examination body is strengthening modular assessment as a way of answering the presidential call for skilling Ugandan youths for job creation. Since Cabinet of Uganda government passed a resolution to merge different government's departments in 2021, there has been a number of debates as to who merges with who, and sooner or later, the number of government departments are going to reduce for the sake of curbing expenditures for public good. The Permanent Secretary at the Ministry of Education and Sports, Katie Lamaro, says that unfortunately many Ugandans are still confusing the roles of some departments under her docket, like UBTEB and DIT. UBTEB has its own mandate and its own assessment mode, and the DIT also has its own area and mandate. I know there are reforms coming that will bring these two institutions together, but I know that they do different, they play different roles in the assessment of, uh, of TVET. But this has been misunderstood by the public and I think now it is we 
as the sector to, to clarify these issues. Lamaro was addressing heads of Tivet institutions in Uganda at a feedback meeting organized by the Uganda Business and Technical Education Board. Therefore, I urge all stakeholders to prioritize the augmentation of Tibet training enrollment as well as the enhancement of the quality of training and facilities. If executed effectively, this approach will significantly improve the employability of Tibet graduates. The Executive Secretary, Yubuteb Ones Masoyesje, says teamwork between the examination body and the Tibet institutions will go a long way to streamline the assessment and performance of the learners. Onesmas cites late registration challenges by many students saying they have hatched a mechanism to help parents and students to ease this activity. But I appreciate the fact there could be a problem with collecting this money from the parents. But this time our system allows the student to enter the system, pay the money through pay the pay school fees portal and register. So that we have at least by the time within like the last three weeks to the examination we should have all the data of the students we are going to assess. Onesma's father elaborates how UBTEB has managed to have excellent assessment and examination series of April and May, July and August 2023. And the heads of Tibet centers have also been constantly engaged on clarity in module assessment and online examination information management system. I'm aware of the emerging issues being jointly handled to ensure that changes are feasible, functional and sustainable. Many members of the technical and vocational institutions are appealing to government to subsidize on the equipment and tools used during examination and assessment season as a way of reducing the burden on the parent of the learners. Going through that system, it's, it's really, really expensive and that's one of the challenges that we have, that sometimes you cannot, as a training institution, demand for all the money that would require somebody to get all the materials that he needs. Ask that uh, maybe government to create a, a special arrangement or reprieve on uh, how to manage the, 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 the training uh, tools and equipment and so forth. Otherwise, uh, it's been a pinch. But, uh, even uh, we have not found any problems with the uh, modularized assessment. Basically, at the Young's Institute of Technology, we emphasize practical skills. So we do little of theory work. That Kaye and Douglas Setumba, UBC News. Minister for Lands, Housing and Urban Development, Judith Nabakova, has urged surveyors to embrace the use of science and technology will, which will not only ease their operations but also offer accuracy. Nabakova has this uh, Thursday afternoon officiated the opening session of the 27th Commonwealth Association of Surveying and Land Economy happening at Makere University. The 27th Commonwealth Association of Surveying and Land Economy Castle has officially opened in Kampala. <laughs> Happening at Makere University from the Engineering, Design, Art and Technology Conference Hall is running under the theme Impact of Artificial Intelligence on the Surveying Profession in the Commonwealth. We are using for AI because AI is leveraging on machines, phones and the like. How do we make sure that these machines are having the same information? at the same level of accuracy, uh, they are returning information that is correct. You get the point? And I think this is where uh, we need the policy, privilege, and for us. Officiating over this session, the Minister for Lands, Housing and Urban Development, Judith Navakova, invited surveyors to integrate technology in their operations. We need to begin now looking at how can we fit ourselves within what is going to take place. I remember in ICT we tell people to have even local ICT software products. And I remember Makere University helped us by giving us products that are made locally. And you realize a product which is made locally even helps you to fit within the environment and the conditions of what you want to serve. 
So my, 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 my request would be that please don't get scared. According to Navakova, technology will not only speed up the surveying process, but on the other hand, offer accuracy. So I think this is the time also to see how can we use fit for purpose as surveyors, because I think you can use your own data along with fit for purpose to ensure that at least you reduce even on the cost of survey, because the cost of survey actually does not serve the local person. We realize that it's very the conference has been facilitated by Common Welfare Session of Surveying and Land Economy in conjunction with the Institution of Surveyors of Uganda and has attracted participants from Africa and beyond. Its aims include the transfer of technology in the Commonwealth, which is why we are here, and it aims to organize CPD programs. When something comes, be flexible to change and adapt quickly. Then another one is to have an analytical mind. At the very end of the opening ceremony, Minister Judith Navakova was treated by a surprise birthday gift. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday. Happy birthday. Robert Nyango, UBC News. Construction for Winyoro University has faced delays as local leaders are unable to reach a consensus on the university's location. During a joint stakeholders meeting organized by the Ministry of Winyoro Affairs in Hoima City, each of the eight districts in the region expressed their willingness to host the university. However, the enthusiasm led by uh, led rather to disagreements among the leaders. Minister for Bunyoro Affairs Jennifer Namuyangu cautioned the leaders against endless disputes, emphasizing that such disagreements are detrimental to the region's development. In a separate meeting, the Minister of State for Bunyoro Affairs, Jennifer Namuyangu, engaged both political and technical leaders in Bunyoro to address issues affecting service delivery in the region. It was revealed during the meeting that there was a struggle for supremacy among the districts in Bunyoro as each expressed a strong desire to host Bunyoro University. Us as a city, we already handed in our minutes, uh, giving away uh, the, the, the Bulera Institute uh, to, to pave way for the, uh, for the Bunyoro University. In the recent uh, you saw the Minister of Education was trying to phase out most of these PTCs, but Bulera was left, meaning that Bulera is still a PTC. Masind is more than ready because uh, in, all the, in the entire region, Masind has a land which is equivalent to 125 acres, which has no any encumbrances and the district is committed to giving it out for the university establishment. Dr. Waman Henry, who offered 100 acres of land in the Pimba Town Council, just about one kilometer from Pimba Town Council, where this land is, 100 acres, titled. The university, according to the plan, will operate in a collegiate system, providing an opportunity for each of the districts in Winyoro to host at least one college. In Chugumba, maybe at uh, UPIC, there can be a college of uh, oil and maybe earth sciences. Uh, maybe Kibale district, it could be a college of agriculture and others. We have uh, Hoima Nursing School, it could be a college of uh, health sciences and others. So these will all be colleges of, uh, of uh, Bunyoro University. Minister Jennifer Namuyangu advised both political and technical leadership to set aside their differences and find a lasting solution promptly. You know, when they are setting up a university, it comes with so many components, including the development of the infrastructure. We are talking about huge buildings, serious investment. So when we say, let's go building here in five acres, and then another year you show government, go there. Because it's normally one off. They give us money, so many billions, it is for infrastructure development. So that's why I'm appealing that when we decide, let's make a cautious, precise decision that will stand the test of time. Additional concerns were raised 
concerning micro-projects under the Bunyoro Affairs Ministry and the recently introduced PDM project. While local leaders believe these initiatives can eradicate poverty, they feel that as leaders, they have not been given the attention they deserve. These people have not been uh, involving the systems of local government. You find a team coming from the office of the Prime Minister, moves direct to, to the villages, they don't have contact with those people, they just identify people. Uh, in the end, you hear uh, uh, the minister communicating to the local government that we identified a group in such and such a village. But when you reach there, the group is not ready really to take up the projects which they do what? They, they identify. These small monies, we can't have an impact on the ground. We can continue giving out these monies to many groups, but we shall not have an impact on the ground, just because the money is not adequate to support these farmers. The meeting was attended by the RCC Hoima City, RDCs, LOC 5 chairpersons, city and municipal mayors, chief administrative officers, and town clerks from the city and municipalities in the region. Now to take a quick break when we return more details. Pay or shop with MTN Momo and get cash back every week. It's free of charge. Wanoni no tuli bukoto. Elaleroe tugendo gaba pichi pichi ya fe. Nereo muanguzi wa fe. Wanoe tuze. I'm so excited. Mm. And I'm sure even mm. all the people, all the staff at Kualiwa, they are all excited. Mm. We thank you very, very much. Nyaka, bini mwene tanu nga mtene wereza. Na inga buli wiki tu gaba pichi pichi tanu. Very, very excited. I'm yes. excited about MTN giving back to its customers. I'm really grateful. Thank you so much, MTN. The fact that we have won really shows that mm. people <laughs> like Momo. <laughs> Their services are really nice. MTN, your services are okay. Uh, the network is good. We are satisfied. Chikola Sensi, ne? Momo! Use the Momo app or dial star 165 star 3 high. Metal Bus Industries, Namande, the manufacturers of buses for transporters, schools, tour operators and special purpose vans. Metal Bus Industries offers a range of buses known for safety, comfort and reliability. Depending on your needs, a bus can simply be a point A to point B people mover with just seats or a special design that includes a restroom, power outlet, Wi-Fi, television and a refreshment center. Buy your buses from Metu and support industrialization of Uganda. Did you know that you can safely and conveniently make your school fees payments anytime, any school, anywhere using Airtel money? Oh yes! Simply pick up your phone and dial star 185 hash. Select option 6, school fees. Choose between school pay, peg pay or shore pay. Enter student number. Enter amount, confirm name and transaction. Enter Airtel money pin. A confirmation message will be sent to you upon a successful transaction. Airtel money. Instant, secure, borderless. Oyagaliza family yo of Gagan over the Mogurunji. Igabo is a Kubifuna, go causes a science net technology and go eat a Mubutonde. O Mokenko Funyanzi Julius, a Chuma Chuagala Chuma. A quantity the extra water sanya Kusuba Kusoma, extra watching at two me, money grows on trees. Sentes made a committee. Where for the copy, Kusinja Mitwale mitwale bit your car, which the picture prof by research, Kukatorio Mall, Kumatabigama Tundilo Gabi Tabo, Aga Aristoc Bookplex, Ku Akasha Mall, Garden City, Kampala Road, Nekumiti Baga. No Jumia Uganda. Oba kuba zero msambu zero satu. Emutano bili. Emutano bili. Tuchukutu seko wona woli. Jukira. Ndi money grows on trees. Sente zimera kumiti. Ndeka wena mula mula. Ndeka wena kambona ku. Otio. Mbake mirubo na. Mbake mwere ukolati. Ndide kula giro no ngeri jiba wayo kumbaga ya mwene. Mbake kwa isamo mwere. Eisi mwere wa. Eisi mwere wa jiburu kwa. Tola yesi mwena. Nakopi ya ironi geisi mutomu lida. Eisi mwere. Nige sita. Ndala muka gaichano. Sita. Isatu. Ote wa ashi. Onige yesi. Balese cha wa. Balese machi antiko odije badi saba. Mama kadibala tiki. Kajobu zono wachi. Chamu nsamfu. Chamu nsamfu. Nsamfu minu ndiye sato. Badi saba. Chamu nsamfu. Eta maundi. Baleta mobile money. Mobile money. Badi kunsa wapini. Ibu cha wacha mpini yo. Iwa. Imu. Masas 
Aye baba, imbaga ya mwene mwe kuoniza. Eh eh eh. Pay or shop with MTN Momo and get cash back every week. It's free of charge. Use the Momo app or dial star 165 star 3 hash. Welcome back. You're still watching News Tonight. The Executive Secretary of Bugwere Kingdom, uh, Wulamberi Tom, has appealed to the Prime Minister, Robin Nabanja, to fully recognize His Highness Geoffrey Wa uh, Wayawire as the Ikumba uh, Nia of Bugwere to accelerate development projects in the region. He made this plea during the return of the Ikumba Nia who had traveled abroad to secure funds for the regional development, which includes improvements in the health sector, education, and more. He has been moving to many countries uh, over, over late. In fact, when he, he stayed to come back, he was in America. So he went, in fact, to lobby. And the programs, the late left in place, was to give us a pharmaceutical center which we had in fact even viewed and we got even the site uh, even to give us in fact a referral international hospital which could accommodate in fact all the nearby residents in fact within East Africa here. Uh, among the programs in fact which is trying to lobby is also intent in fact to give us what we call interest free loan that is the president of, uh, I mean, the government of uh, Turkey. Those uh, people, in fact, who deal with that project. As he came back, he told us that those people, in fact, are ready <coughs> to come and respond and fulfill, in fact, the promise that he made before. So I'm trying to, this is just an humble appeal to, more especially, in fact, the clan leaders who are being misled here and there. You stand firm, knowing that, in fact, the person we elected is somebody, in fact, who cares for Bugwere and is mindful of Bugwere and is targets to ensure that Bugwere shines. I'm just an humble happy that live alone, in fact, trying to indulge yourself in such dubious activities. We're only just appealing to you to come, to, I mean, to come together and plan and ensure that have the heart for Bugwere, other than just being misled, because this has been always the youth, because we are, you are the future leaders of tomorrow. We love you, and we need, in fact, your presence, and we need, in fact, your company to ensure that at least we come together and build Bugwere. Because our Ikumbania is still a younger man, and he, he deals, in fact, with the youth. So it's a humble appeal to the youth that youth are the people in fact who are vulnerable. So he's intending to, in, to, entice, uh, to entice in fact the youth to ensure that they are also involved in developmental activities. Concerned uh, body, more especially in fact the line minister, to ensure that you activate in fact the exercise in fact of trying to recognize our Ikumbani. Because the delay to recognize him as in fact a, deprived in fact the development in Bugwere. <laughs> And Uganda Media Women's Association has convened a meeting for different stakeholders in the media to continue advocating press freedoms, especially for women across the country. Brenda Namata, the Communications and Advocacy Officer, Uganda Women Media Association, indicates that there are still continuous violations of press freedoms for women in the districts of Kampala and Wakiso. to provide development information to women and marginalized groups for effective decision making and advocate for gender responsive policies and legislation. Rose Kemigisa, the senior officer from the Uganda Human Rights Commission says, the issue of abuse for women in the media fraternity is deeply rooted in a societal and cultural fabric 
She therefore calls for urgent need to address the root cause and bring perpetrators to book. Linkage of gender-based violence in physical spaces and the online violence, the wider implication of harassment of individual women journalists to the wider journalism profession and media as a business, and to the general human rights landscape. So it's not just about attack on one female journalist. It translates into many of these other things. They have suffered psychological harm, breach of privacy, loss of identity, limitation of mobility, censorship, and loss of property because of their work. Creation of awareness on the violations meted against female journalists was among the many of the objectives for the stakeholder meeting in media fraternity. Organized on the theme of strengthening safety and security mechanisms for female journalists, we are calling on to the regulator and all government agencies that speak to media to gender mainstream the media and legal regulatory framework that can create an environment which is safe for both female journalists and male journalists to practice their press rights. I've come out as a country, come out as Ministry of ICT and Uganda Communications Commission to see that these stipulations are domesticated and streamlined within our legal framework. This way, it will create grounds on which media houses can be held accountable on the violations that are being seen against the female journalists within the media house externally, let the perpetrators be punished or let us see access to justice by victims or survivors of this challenge. Brenda Namata, the Communications and Advocacy Officer, Uganda Media Women Association, is one of the team leaders that conducted research into districts of Kampala and Wakisum. It indicates that journalism is becoming an unsafe profession for some females. They are using women to solicit or source interviews from big sources, considered big sources or uh, sensitive content. And so here we discovered that whereas all these violations are happening, there are no mechanisms within media houses which are called the safety policies and channels where female journalists can go and report these violations. Therefore, there's a breed of a silent culture. The Uganda Media Women Association, formed in 1993, also aims to raise the status of Uganda's women, especially those in rural communities getting involved and freely participate in development programs. Shaida Nasakum, Robert Katamba, UBC. Now, during the launch of the brand new comedy series, Hotel Mara, Patricia Kichoncho, the head of customer experience and care at Multi Choice Uganda, announced their commitment to providing a platform for local storytellers to employ their creativity and talent in promoting a positive narrative of Uganda. Now, Tell Mara is a local series that offers a golden opportunity for both uh, seasoned and emerging actors and actresses in the industry to entertain Ugandans with expertly executed plot lines infused with comedy. What if a customer got into a fight? Ah, ah, it's a yes. To be honest with you, it has given me a whole different experience. Always shooting is more of stress and stress and stress. You run from the stomach to the other, one thing into another. At the launch, Patricia Chichoncho, head of customer experience and care at Multi Choice Uganda, spoke about the diversity that this show brings to the Ugandan screens. She emphasized that they have offered a platform for local storytellers to utilize their creativity and talent in promoting a positive image of Uganda. Stephen Ayenyi, the producer of Hotel Mara, expressed his gratitude to Multi Choice for their pivotal role in elevating the standards of local content showcased on Pearl Magic. He mentioned that the shift in production standards has not only improved the quality of content, but has also had a significant impact on the lives of those directly or indirectly connected to the industry. Back and forth, calling you time and again, even uh, late night, asking for, you know, guidance. Thank you so much for being there for us. Someone saying that every time you laugh, you add a few seconds to your life. Um, I don't know how true that is. 
Over the past two decades, we have witnessed a remarkable transforming in the production value of stories. This transformation has not only enhanced the quality of content, but has also made a significant impact on the livelihoods of those involved in the industry. Story compiled by Jamil Sekaja for UBC News. That right there is my birth name. Kati Gui, what is your birth name? And now in business, Minister for Gender, Labor and Social Development, Betty Amongi, has urged people in the creative industry to make use of their energy and creativity to grab the vast opportunities available in film and theater sector. This was during the launch of two million euro project by the European Union known as Opportunities Are Here in Kampala, which is channeled at supporting the film industry in Uganda. The 2 million euro, which is approximately 7 billion Ugandan shillings, will be awarded amongst nine final movie actors that would have come up with the best story pitches to aid in elevating their art and exposure to the global film sector. You will pitch your content and film ideas. When you win in the pitching, then you will also be... Uh, among the 100 people that will be supported to move to the next level of competition. The skills that we, that we provide, the international networks that will be provided, the partnerships that will be provided at the global level will remain here also after this uh, project. So it doesn't stop with the project. This is going to be a catalyst for the Ugandan filmmaking. We, 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 we. The sector practitioners say this is an opportunity for the film industry to propagate further into the untapped opportunities. So it is important that some of us, like, you know, me personally, I feel like it will be a great platform for me to transfer what I know to a larger audience than maybe talking to one or two people. So two million euros would basically enable some of us to hold master classes, to be able to say, I want to mentor 30 to 40 people and let them know what I know. Then it's an amazing opportunity for people because, um, and not just for people in, in general, but for creatives. I mean, if, if, it's a chance for us to, 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 to upskill, to learn more, to, to grow as filmmakers. So I feel like opportunities are here is the gift that keeps giving. On a similar note, Honorable Victoria Baliesubula made a call to the policy makers to give more attention to the creative industry to achieve shared growth like other sectors. I know the creative industry is new, but it is real. I suggest we start taking, paying attention, including them in everything, especially the plans, the budget, and so on and so forth. The film industry in Uganda employs over 40% of the people directly and indirectly through the cosmetics and hair dealers, food dealers, fashion designers, and other service providers. Mariona Wari and Rogers Komagum, UBC. And they tell you. So, you are ready to invest in Airtel's initial public offering? Good choice. I'm going to show you how to do it straight from your phone. First, you're going to want to make sure you have a Securities Central Depository SCD account. Dial star 185 star 85 hash from your Airtel number. Choose Airtel IPO purchase from the available options. Enter your valid national identification number when prompted. Before you purchase, there are a few things you need to know. The minimum purchase is 2,500 shares. The share price is 100 Uganda shillings. 
Select the number of shares you wish to purchase. Choose your relevant broker for the purchase. Enter your Airtel Money PIN to confirm the transaction. Congratulations! You receive a confirmation message of your successful purchase. Juku. Yo. Hawa chikuwa. Etirai. Check the shopping man. What's your secret? <laughs> We're gonna hang. Mm. Haven't you heard of the Paris TV men model PDM? Yes, I did, but I thought it was just a talk. Ah, no. It is real. Mm. I and a few friends together mm -hmm. formed a circle, accessed money from the PDM, mm. invested in a portrait project, mm. and now things are moving. Uh, 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 Juku. <laughs> I thought I was one of your friends. You are. But you left me behind. I didn't leave you in poverty. Mm. But what you do, uh -huh. just visit your LC2 chairperson and mm. your parish chief mm. Eh? Mm. and start the process of economic transformation. Mm. Eh, just like that. Okay. <laughs> the parish development model is an initiative from the government of Uganda mm. through the Ministry of Local Government mm -hmm. designed to transform all lives of Ugandans for the better. <laughs> <laughs> PDM. My parish, my development, my life. Mom, how did you sleep? How is Salongo? Oh, mommy, how is grandma? And Simba, the dog, yeah, the funny one. Call Bonav on any network in Uganda with Airtel Bona Voice Bandas. Dial star 100, star 1 hash. Select Call Bona to choose bandas from as low as 1,000 shillings from daily, weekly, monthly, or bandas that don't expire. Call Bona on any network in Uganda with Airtel. A reason to imagine. Welcome back. And now in sports, yesterday, the 25th October, the National Council of Sports released a letter stating the withdrawal of the Certificate of Recognition from Uganda Netball Federation. UBC TV spoke to the chairperson of the National Council of Sports on what led to the decision, the meaning and the implications. On what led to the decision to withdraw the Certificate of Recognition from the Uganda Netball Federation, the chairperson of the National Council of Sports, Ambrose Tashovia, says that efforts by the council to resolve the federation issues as directed by the First Lady and the Minister of Education and Sports hit a deadlock. The netball, uh, through two notices, was notified on the areas where council had issues. Uh, on governance, on accountability, and opening up of uh, accounts without proper documentation, and some of them forged. Um, uh, without uh, not declaring the source of money, there were a number of issues that were related in the two notices. Uh, and yet, the trend that we see in Nestbo is not that things are getting better. They actually have been getting worse as far as management is concerned. The Secretariat also received a letter that was saying that they were either intending to do or they are opening up the case. So showing that there is no willingness to come and try to elaborate and uh, resolve on these mat matters that had been raised. So the efforts even of council to try and resolve the issues were also hitting a dead end. When we spoke to the president of the Uganda Netball Federation, Sarah Babidech Tio, she asserted that all the issues indicated were resolved and she interprets the withdrawal of the certificate as an end to the sport in Uganda. Report was from IGD. It was in our favor. The second report was from the Attorney General. It was in our favor. The third report is from the Attorney General, the IGG, the Auditor General. Believe me, it is in our favor. If it was in the favor of National Council of Sports, they should have written a letter calling us to pin us over the same. Because withdrawing a license means Uganda doesn't have Nepal. Tashobia allays netball fans' fears by saying that the sport is still alive and that there are protocols to follow to help the sport progress. We disconnected ourselves from the body called Uganda Netball Federation. We did not stop the game of netball in Uganda. And if we think that our Ugandans need to go to do netball, and we have had a framework with world netball, will put a working relationship in place on how that can happen between us and the, and the world network. But we are sure that there's going to be a, a process that's going to start this henceforth. 
So the intention of withdrawing is to safeguard the spot for the longer haul. Speaking about the netball issues, the chairman says that if the netball federation can resolve its issues, the certificate will be restored. If they came back after one month and they have resolved all these issues, we will sit. We can even uh, can instruct uh, my uh, technical committee to you know uh, sit uh, in an emergency uh, meeting because the netball is one of our priority sports. On the contrary, the president of the Uganda Netball Federation hopes to restore order in the sport through courts of law. For I and my executive members, we've gone to court. We shall pursue this until we are given justice. And if all else fails... What we are hoping is that if the organizational committee comes up, the same body could clean itself up and come back. But if it does not, then government will seek another body to take over netball in the country. Netball is one of the top sports in Uganda, with the Shikrains ranked third in Africa and seventh in the world. With the looming management issues at the Uganda Netball Federation, Ugandans will only hope the issues can be resolved soon to allow the sport to grow. Grace Joyce Kemigisa, UBC News. Well, that does it for news tonight. Thank you for sticking with us. I am Rhoda Ngonzi. I'll leave you with the weather update. This weather update is brought to you by Uganda National Meteorological Authority together with UBC. I'm Sharon Nakajiri tonight. Now, most of you must have experienced rain in the morning, especially in our capital city, Kampala, in Entebbe and other surrounding areas along Lake Victoria. The satellite taken over Africa today clearly shows that we have spare over from the Indian Ocean towards our country, Uganda, coupled with Kong air mass towards the western parts of the country, making the west active. Tomorrow morning, we are forecasting sunny intervals in Entebbe, Kampala, Masaka, as well as in Nakasongola. For the western stretch, we shall have light rains in Kabale, Kasese, and in Ivanda, for Masindi, we shall have sunny intervals. For the eastern parts of the country, that includes Soroti, Jinja, Palisa, we are forecasting sunny intervals, as well as in the northern parts of the country. During the course of the afternoon, we shall have a pickup of light rains in Movende and in Masaka. Temperatures in the, no in the central will range between 27 degrees Celsius and 28 degrees Celsius in Nakasongola. For the western stretch, we shall have temperatures going up to 23 degrees Celsius in Kabale. Elsewhere, temperatures will range between 25 degrees Celsius and 28 degrees Celsius. We are forecasting light rains in Amoria, Palisa, and in Imbale. Temperatures in the eastern parts of the country will range between 27 degrees Celsius and 30 degrees Celsius. For the north, we shall have light rains in Gulu and in Lira. Temperatures are expected to range between 29 degrees Celsius and 30 degrees Celsius. For international weather forecast, we shall have bright and sunny condition, conditions in New York. Temperatures going up to 25 degrees Celsius. Sunny intervals are forecasted in Nairobi at 25 degrees Celsius. That nicely concludes our weather forecast today. Till tomorrow, have a good night. UBC, inspiring Uganda. So, you are ready to invest in Airtel's initial public offering? Good choice. I'm going to show you how to do it straight from your phone. First, you're going to want to make sure you have a Securities Central Depository SCD account. Dial star 185 star 85 hash from your Airtel number. Choose Airtel IPO purchase from the available options. Enter your valid national identification number when prompted. Before you purchase, there are a few things you need to know. The minimum purchase is 2,000 